Well, hello, Trilogy members. Welcome to our first keynote speaker for 2024. So glad you're here with us today. And let me get some, as I call, laundry items off my list. So reminder to everybody who's participating today, this will be a recorded session and we will post it on MTLs shortly within a day or two after today's presentation has, has concluded. And also want to let you know that we are posting the presentation as well. So super, super excited about that. And then we are also monitoring the chat. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat feature. Um, and one of my colleagues is here with me today. So between the two of us, we will take care of as many of those as possible. But we will wait and ask our special guest today to answer those at the end of the program. Um, so we should be good to go. And I do want to give a really special shout out to our communities up in the Pacific Northwest. That would be Vertera and also um, Seven Summits Lodge in Tahale. Both of them are hosting watch parties today. And we, we are really, really excited that you guys are doing that. So thank you very much. And to all the members who came in person, thanks so, so much. Okay, now let's get to the good stuff. I know you're tired of me because you see me all the time. So. Um, this is my this is my distinct pleasure. And trust me, I'm a little bit nervous today. I'm not really quite sure why, but I am. And I guess it's because when we did a rehearsal a couple of days ago, I was so excited by the time we got done. I was flipping through a cookbook and trying to figure out what to make that night because I really learned a ton even in rehearsal. So it is my distinct pleasure to tell you about registered dietitian, dietitian and nutritionist, as well as TV host. Zanya Foco, here to share with you her anti-aging food secrets. Now, it's, it's a shame she told me this because now I always say it, but to remember her name, Zonia, Zanya Foco, think about lasagna cocoa, except if you're like me and I share it with my team, that's how they're probably going to call her from now on. So hailing from Onstead, Michigan, Zanya is a host of Zanya's Health Bites, a weekly half-hour show that has aired on public television stations na nationwide for over a decade. So I bet if we were to take a poll around, to many of you, this may be a very familiar face. And if so, we are so delighted that you decided to join us today. She is the author of the best-selling Lickety Split Meals. And I have here, as well as there's a photo on your screen, of Eat real cookbooks. And I tell you what, again, if you are in person, your lifestyle team is going to be giving away one of these cookbooks today. So stay tuned for that. Um, her online programs for controlling diabetes, depression, blood pressure, cholesterol, and losing weight help so many people shock their doc by their next appointment. Sonia has even had the pleasure of working with Oprah's personal trainer, Bob Green, as the guest presenter for Oprah and Bob's Best Life Challenge. And that's our host right there today. Not Bob, by the way, the other one. But out of all these things, Zanya has been a proud wife and mom. Super excited about this picture. So you may notice the handsome gentleman to my left with a little bit of gray there happens to be... Um, an AV tech in the family who's helping her out today. So thank you very much. And now just remember, she wanted me to let you know that one of her family members struggles with eating right and exercise. Yes, that's Buster, the family dog. And he is five critical pounds overweight. But ever since he attended one of Zanya's programs, He's doing so much better. Oh, yay. Even looks younger to me. So please help me help me welcome. And I'm going to say it just because I want to on air. Lasagna Coco. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. Wonderful job. Thank you. And welcome, everybody, uh, to Anti-Aging Secrets. I'm so glad to, to be here today. And just to, uh, just to give you an idea, like anti-aging food secrets, are we going to talk about 
how to improve the collagen of our skin so that we have less wrinkles and look younger than all our friends. Actually, we are going to talk about some of that. Are we going to talk about how to burn fat and increase muscle mass so that we can play some big time pickleball and golf and run and hike and bike? Well, as a matter of fact, a lot of the tips I'm going to give for you are going to absolutely help you with that too. But what about fighting off and living long and fighting off some diseases like type two diabetes that shortens our life? Or what about a heart attack or stroke? Do any of these run in your family? Are you at risk for any of these things? What can we do? Are there things that we can eat to decrease our risk of, of these things and extend our life? <laughs> Absolutely, uh, we can. And I know for myself, uh, my mom died of Alzheimer's disease, as did her brother and sister, all three siblings. And then my dad had a stroke that he survived, but has limited him. And it's like, wow, I have a stroke and Alzheimer's. I went to my doctor and I said, doc, you know, can you help me out here? I want to, I want to do all I can. I want to anti-age. I want to do all I can to help prevent that. And if you have any, what runs in your family, put that in the, in the chat there. Um, what runs in your family? What would you like to dodge? Because that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this program. And so I was talking with my doctor and he said, we'll tell you what he goes, we'll check your lipid profile, which I always do. And it's always really good. He goes, but we're also going to check your C reactive protein, CRP. And I was like, okay, great. I've never had that measured. He said, because it's very strong in Alzheimer's disease, also very strong in heart disease and stroke. So we want to bring down inflammation markers in your body. We want to be able to measure that. So let's measure it. So sure enough, did that. We had our meeting to go over my numbers. And he said, tell me again, what do you eat? And I was telling him what I eat, the same things I'm going to tell you that I eat today. And he said, because your cholesterol is great. Everything's great. You're like heart attack proof. That's great. And I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of knew that that would be, that's always is. And I said, but what about the CRP? He goes, yeah, what about your CRP? And I go, well, what about it? How is it? And he said, your CRP, your C-reactive protein, your inflammation markers are the lowest I've ever seen. I said, really? He said, yes. What do you eat again? Well, guess what? I'm going to share with you exactly what I eat because I'm doing everything I can to help fight Alzheimer's disease and stroke. And I want to share those things with you. And I want you to think about your so what, because when it comes to, I'm going to, we're going to talk about this choice or this choice, this choice or this choice. And it's the, so that, so that so that you can have these anti-aging benefits. And that's really kind of what the crux is for today. So tell you what, let's go to our slides and uh, let's just go ahead and show you what we're gonna cover today. And what can you learn from me today? We're going to learn what inflammation is. We kind of touched on it a bit and how to decrease it, all right? And we're gonna talk about what our telomeres are and how to lengthen them so we live longer. Yep, telomeres. And what a lot of people are doing wrong because a lot of people are doing a lot of things wrong and we're going to uncover that, how they can correct it to do it right and how to get top science backed anti-aging foods into our diet easily and deliciously. Uh, that's what today's about. Now I'm going to be sharing a lot of really cool things from Dr. Greger, his uh, top selling book right now, uh, how not to age. And there are 11 pathways to aging. It's 27 hours of reading. I highly encourage it. Great stuff. And I'm going to hit some great highlights. We're going to talk about some of the top pathways of aging. And we're going to talk about telomeres. All right. Telomeres. It's the tip of each. This is how Dr. Greger talks about this and talks about aging. It's the tip of each chromosome is a protective cap called a telomere. As you look over on the right, we start out as we're born with really great protective caps on our, on the end of each chromosome. And as we age every day from the day we're born, our telomeres can decrease, 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 all depend on our lifestyle. And when they're gone, we're gone too. That's, it's kind of, it's how we predict longevity um, of life. Telomeres keep our DNA from fraying or fusing with other chromosomes. Think of it as the 
tips on shoestrings. That's right, the protective tips on shoestrings kind of keeps them from fraying just like that. The longer the telomeres, the longer you have telomeres, the better defense against age associated diseases and longer life. For instance, women have longer telomeres than men and that's why we have longer lifespan uh, typically than men. Uh, they can look at it across species. They can look at it across dogs and across different breeds of dogs. And they have definitely their telomeres shorten much more quickly, which is why they have lower, uh, much shorter uh, lifespans than we do. And shortened telomeres, not only are they associated with a shorter life, they're associated with arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, liver failure. Oh my goodness, all these things and a reduction of muscle mass and performance like measured with um, your grip strength, as well as reduced immune function. We don't want that. And Alzheimer's disease is one of the age-related diseases most strongly linked to short telomeres. Wow. So there's a lot of so that, <laughs> there's a lot of benefit from what we're gonna talk about today. A lot that's on the line with anti-aging. Now. As you look at this, this is a Time magazine from 2004. That's 20 years ago. 20 years ago, they were talking about the surprising link between inflammation, heart attacks, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. Yep, 20 years, we've been talking about this. And I know you've heard of the word inflammation. Well, what is it really? Inflammation is like when you cut yourself and it gets kind of red and that's inflammation. That's important. That is your, your inflammatory, your immune response going to redden it, fight it. And we do want to have a strong immune system. We do inflammation at a chronic level is very important, but when it's systemic and it's chronic and it's going all through our body, that's a problem. Telomere elongation right? We want to keep our telomeres long, longer is possibly, is possible through the constant daily fight against this inflammation, chronic inflammation throughout our body. And we can do that. Today, we're going to stop inflammaging, which is a term. It's an actual term where we, what we eat actually stokes the fire of inflammation in the body. And we wanna douse the flames of inflammation in the body. We absolutely definitely wanna do that. Now, when you think about what do we typically eat in America? When you go to a restaurant, what's 80% of the things that are offered? What do we Americans crave and love? What has become most popular? Now, a lot of times there's healthier choices on the menu, but for the most part, this is what we see, right? And some of you look at this and go, oh, I, I don't eat pizza that often. Okay, maybe once a week. And you think I don't have a hamburger that often? Okay, maybe once a week. And I don't have French fries that often? Okay, maybe twice a week. And I don't have potato chips or donuts. I don't have donuts very often. Okay, maybe once a week. These, ladies and gentlemen, are all foods that stoke inflammation, except for the peanuts. The peanuts are good for you. And ketchup, I enjoy some ketchup too. But how many things are on here that fight inflammation? Do we see salmon? Salmon fights inflammation, it's not here. Do we see an orange? Do we see an apple? Do we see berries? Do we see the rainbow, the color of the rainbow, fruits and vegetables? Do we see broccoli here? Do we see the foods that absolutely science shows us elongates our telomeres? and reduces it and does so by reducing inflammation in the body. This is, you think about putting gasoline on a fire, certain fats that we put on a fire make the flame go really bright and some fats douse the flames of inflammation. We wanna get the fats right. So it's not just the fats here, it's not just the refined flours and the sugars here, it's the fact that there's a lack of nutrients here too from a lack of fruits and vegetables. So that's a pretty big deal. So what's next? I wanted to share, I told you that I was gonna share you know, what are people doing wrong? And even people that think they're eating healthy, you take a look at this and you think, oh, this looks like a pretty darn good day. I mean, you've got your cereal um, and yes, it's shredded wheat, look at that. And so what, I got the frosted kind because, you know, it's just a little bit of sugar, isn't it? Can't eat them without it. Well, there's a lot of sugar that they put on that and you can sweeten it just with fruit actually. <laughs> but you've got some sugar from there. You don't have a whole fruit serving from those berries. But then you look at that sandwich and you go, wow, that sandwich looks really good. And it's even got lettuce and tomato on it and whole wheat bread. Look at that. And lean turkey meat. 
And yeah, a slice of cheese. That looks pretty fine, doesn't it? And then a granola bar. I mean, you know, you got to have a snack. You're out golfing, got to have something to get through the afternoon. And then you, you have this perfect dinner, totally perfect dinner. Come on, there's nothing wrong with that. It might be a little boring, but there's nothing wrong with it. And then you think, look, I've been good all day. I've been so good, right? So I have some ice cream. In general, you look at that and think it's not too bad of a day. And you think, does this inflammation, is this hurting my telomeres? Well, there is barely three servings of fruit and vegetables. And fruit and vegetables are the thing that provide the nutrients that douse inflammation. They are antioxidants. They are the thing that brings inflammation down. And there's only three servings. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we need to have 10 10 servings. You've probably heard five, five, but no, we need 10, <laughs> 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And I'm going to show you today how you can deliciously do that. Yeah, you can. There's also barely 13 grams of fiber here. Wow. Barely 13 grams of fiber. And that's the average for Americans. And that's like pretty good and a pretty good day. But guess what? We need 30, 30 grams. And that will feed our microbiome. That will feed so many things, so many things. And it's over 12 teaspoons of added sugar. Added sugar hides in a lot of foods. You wouldn't think so, but it is. And fact, and sugar is very pro-inflammatory. In fact, the American Heart Association is so concerned about that. Um, Americans consume 22 teaspoons of added sugar a day. And they are very, very, really want us to get that under control. American Heart Association's safe daily limit is six teaspoons uh, for, for women, nine for men, not fair that men get more, but they do. And three to six teaspoons for children. Um, that we can, we can have some added sugar. We don't have to have, it doesn't have to be zero, but 22 teaspoons on average is a lot. So you look at that difference. If you take seven, nine, and like seven and a half teaspoons right in the middle between six and nine, something like that, you take right in between that. It's on average, we're eating 17 and a half teaspoons, too much added sugar every day. That's right about a third of a cup, a third of a cup. Wow. Think about that on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, they were eating this much sugar and we don't really realize it. And is that dousing the flames of inflammation? It adds up to 10 cups every month. That's what, 120 cups every year. And our organs are not designed to process this much sugar. So you think about type two diabetes, you think about heart disease and stroke and Alzheimer's disease, very much so related to so many things. So um, yeah, sugar. And I'm going to be talking about simple ways to decrease sugar so, so that we can help our aging and slow the aging and help our telomeres. As we look at this added sugar, we don't even have to get rid of it. We just have to moderate it. We just got to get it down to that six to nine teaspoons a day. Right. And the laboratory results will improve within days really, um, or within weeks. And that's good news. And it's not as hard as you think. It's not as hard as you think. Okay. I think it's time for us to play a game. And so here's the, there's, when you look down at the bottom of your screen, there's, there's, I think it's at the bottom, maybe it's at the top. I don't know where, but chat, look for the chat button and click on the chat button and you'll see your box come up and we're going to use that. Now there's the Q and A box. And if you ever have a question, put it in the Q and A box, because I'm going to answer questions at the end. Sarah's going to feed them to me at the end. Okay. So put your questions Thanks in the Q and A box. Answer. Got that? Questions in the Q&A box and put um, your chat right now. What I'm going to do is we're going to play a game and the game is called Name That Food. Yep. Name That Food. And so when you think of the food, you're going to type it in the chat. So here's how it goes. Say it with me. Name, Name That, that Food. food. <laughs> a 32 ounce bottle of what? has 52 grams of sugar, which is the same amount of sugar as in five Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh my goodness. Look at all the, look at it coming in. Ketchup was one of them. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Orange juice. Uh, somebody said Gatorade, soft drinks. Look at all these popping in soda. Okay. Soda is a good guess, but soda is not the right answer. Uh, Coke or Pepsi or Mountain Dew. Any of those would be the equivalent of right at nine to 10 Reese's peanut butter cups. That's right. 
Uh huh. So no, it's something less than Coke or Pepsi. Um, it's not orange juice because I'm talking about added sugars and orange juice has natural sugars. And so I'm not talking about juice here, but that's a good guess. And energy drinks are pretty good. Just the lemonade is a great guess. Lemonade's a really good guess. Um, but again, lemonade would be right in the 10 Reese's peanut butter cup category. Yes, it would. Spaghetti sauce. No, that's not it. Those are some good guesses. I saw a couple of the answers. Some of you were so right. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> and a couple smart people out there. It's Gatorade. And you think, wait, isn't that a healthy sports drink with all the electrolytes? And I just want you to know, sugar adds up. Sugar adds up in a lot of things. And we sweeten things to, to make it taste good. And so this size amount might be a little too much. I want you to look at your beverages. Find out like how can you make water your primary source and look at where added sugars are coming in in your beverages. That's pretty important. All right. Are you ready for the next one? Let's do this name that food. Say it with me again. Here we go. Name, name that, that food. food. That's the cereal. What? is marketed as high and good for you antioxidants and fiber, but contains more sugar than Fruit Loops. Put in the guesses, granola is a good guess. Cheerios, granola, Cheerios is not the right answer. Raisin Bran, another really good guess. Um, Shredded, frosted shredded wheat. No, it's not quite this high. And um, Raisin Bran is close, but not quite that high. Some oatmeals could be that high. Um, I suppose honey bunches of oats might be that high, but really none of them are quite as high as this one. Those are all good guesses. Special K, that's not, Special K isn't quite that high. Um, some good guesses, but the answer is, are you ready? Smart start? Original antioxidants? Bazani, didn't you tell me that antioxidants are good? Well, they really want you to buy their cereal, don't they? But they put a lot of sugar in there because this is really a grown-up kid's cereal with adult marketing on it to make you think it's good for you. So don't be duped. Don't have tricked written across your forehead. Read your labels. Read your labels and you will see added sugars. Added sugars are an amazing new thing that they put on the label so that you can tell the difference from fruit that, that might be added from the raisins because we don't care about the natural sugar occurring from raisins. We care about added sugars. Added sugars are always there. So definitely look for that. All right, we're going to do one more. Are you ready? Say it with me. Name, Name that, that food. food. Very good. According to brain imaging, what is as addictive as cocaine? Look at that. Got a lot of right answers coming in. Yep. Flower. You know, the answer is, there are some good guesses. Um, flour, refined flours can be very addictive too as well. But we do know sugar, and when you combine it with flour and you combine it with fat, oh my goodness, can be really, really addictive. But sugar, we know we can measure the pleasure pathways of the brain through MRI imaging, and we can see it light up very similar to when someone uses cocaine. So it is very addictive. So if any of you have ever like, I can't stop eating cookies. I can't stop eating candy. I can't stop eating certain things. I just, it's like I crave them. It's not your fault. We understand sugar is addictive. Take a deep breath, reconstruct your home, Figure out a way to make the environment conducive for success. Realize that sugar is not your friend and make your environment conducive for success. In fact, I'm going to teach you how to get through this. And fruit is a really, really, it's loaded with antioxidants. It's loaded with potassium, um, vitamins, minerals, hydration. It fills you up. Single servings, fiber, the magnesium satisfies the sweet craving. In fact, let me just share with you a little bit. I was working with a woman one time and she said, Zanya, she said, I, I get terrible sweet cravings. And she said, I have a perfect breakfast, perfect lunch, but every afternoon I just, I can't help it. I go to my snack cupboard and I eat like, you know, sweets and things and things that are there. Well, if they weren't there, they might be a little less tempting, but anyway, she eats them sweets, these sweets, she has to have these sweets. And then, you know, she said, otherwise I have a perfect dinner. Everything's perfect. I don't snack after dinner, but that is keeping me from my health goals. That is keeping me from managing my blood sugar as good as I can. It's managing my weight, all of that. It's all about these sweet cravings. How do I get rid of them? And I asked her, I said, so in a day, I said, how many pieces of fruit do you eat? And she goes, fruit? She goes, isn't that high in sugar? <laughs> I said, well, it's high in antioxidants. It's high in fiber. It's high in hydration. 
and it provides just enough simple carbohydrate for your brain because your brain requires simple carbohydrate for its functioning. And if you don't get that little bit of simple carbohydrate for its functioning throughout the day, what your brain does is it sends you a fruit craving. How do you read your fruit cravings? Sugar and chocolate, right? Little misinterpretation thing going on. So I said to her, I said, look, I really think your problem is, is that you're depriving your brain of simple carbohydrates. I think you need to eat three fruits a day, three fruits. You got antioxidants, you got fiber. It's going to help you get to the 30 grams of fiber a day. In fact, you can't get to 30 grams of fiber a day really without it. You got to have three fruits a day. Even for people who have type two diabetes, it is perfect. You need to have three single serving. We're not talking a whole watermelon in one sitting. We're talking single servings, size of your fist, servings of fruit throughout the day. I said, it will satisfy you. And I really think your sweet cravings will go away. In fact, I taught her my sweet craving cure. The sweet craving cure is have a glass of water because sometimes cravings are, are you're thirsty. Have a serving of water and uh, a, a piece, a glass of water and a serving of fruit every four hours while awake. I say, you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to do it. <laughs> so a glass of water, serving of fruit every four hours while awake. So I give her this thing. She's like, okay, I'll do it. So she goes off. She goes, I got to buy a lot of fruit. I go, yep, got to buy a lot of fruit. Got a husband, got to buy for them too. Okay, that's a lot. Anyway, she comes back after two weeks. I said, so how was your, how was your sweet cravings? And she said, oh. she said, I didn't have a one. So I gave this presentation one time. Um, and I told that story and it was in Oregon, Portland, Oregon. And I got this email shortly afterwards and I'm going to read this email to you. Um, this person named Laurel, she said, I heard you speak in Portland last week. I want to thank you so much for your tip about fending off cravings for sweets. My husband has been like an alcoholic only with sweets. If he got a little, he wanted a lot. Once he had the cravings, there was no stopping him. I've seen him swigging carol corn syrup if nothing else was available. Hmm, that's some sweet cravings right there. We've been consuming fruit every four hours, she says, when awake. <laughs> and she says, he reports his cravings are gone. I can't thank you enough. You've made a believer out of me. Laurel from Portland, Oregon. Can we give her a big round of applause? Woo! And my question is to you, will you try my sweet craving here? If you have sweet cravings, getting sugar out of your house so it doesn't tempt you, the sugar bowl got to go. Being able to make things, if they're there in front of me, I want them too. Getting them away, but making fruit be your dessert. It's amazing how you can let fruit be your dessert. In fact, we'll go to our slides and I'll just show you how this brings us home. This it is. Try my sweet craving cure. And I'm asking you, will you? This is homework assignment number one. Uh, one glass of water and a fruit serving every four hours while awake. No more sweet cravings. So in the chat, will you give it a try? And it says any fruits to avoid. I'm asking like bananas. Very interesting. On the internet, there'll be like bananas are bad for you. And I'm going to tell you, bananas are not the cause of obesity in America today. So no, you don't have to avoid bananas. I enjoy bananas, but here's what you do need to know. One banana is equal to two fruits. It's equal to two apples or two oranges. And it's because it has less water content and there's just a lot more to it. So when you eat it, it's twice as many calories. It's, it's, it, so people go, it's so fattening. It's got 30 grams of carbohydrate. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, and it's like, you know, an apple, um, typically a smaller apple will only have 15. And so it doesn't make a banana bad. It just means Scott and I share one. And it means a half a banana is typically the amount that I will have instead of a whole banana. And that makes all the difference in the world. It's kind of like a watermelon is not one serving, right? And grapes, 12, 12 grapes is a serving, but they're not a bad fruit but they are bad if you eat 40. And uh, if you eat a whole bunch of watermelon, it becomes too much. But remember that the fiber, the antioxidants, they're so much good. You can never rate a food simply by one thing, like an egg. Oh, it's bad for you because it has cholesterol. 
Well, it's got so many other good things for it too. So you want to make sure that when you evaluate a food that you're looking at not just one thing and a banana, people are looking at that one thing. Now, some people will go, well, there's a lot more sugar content in a ripe banana than a green, you know, green, yellow banana. And we're splitting hairs here, really. Um, yeah, okay, um, maybe a little bit more, um, but it's not, uh, not the cause of obesity in America today. Processed foods are the cause of obesity in America today. And if I had one thing to tell you, it would be eat real food, eat real. When we eat real unprocessed food, which fruits and vegetables are real unprocessed food, um, we don't get fat. We don't have heart disease. We don't have diabetes. We don't have Alzheimer's disease, real food. So it's processed food. So that's a great question. Other questions. Um, I know that I'll let Sarah, I'm not going to look too much of the chat right now, but um, Sarah will be um, helping me get those all nice and organized for our last 15 minutes together. All righty. So you got the sweet craving cure under control, right? That's my challenge. Number one, I want you to see if it works for you. And because it is important, it's not advancing. So let me get to the crooks of the foods that are the main dietary drivers of telomere uh, length. Um, the goal is um, looking at, the goal is to combat oxidative stress and inflammation. So what are those foods? So and you tell me, what are those foods? Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to list them all for you right here. The telomere loss, the foods that are related to telomere loss is added sugar. We just addressed that. Um, desserts and beverages, use fruit instead. Wrong fats. Uh, you know, we eat a lot of fr deep fried foods. We eat a lot of processed foods. The fats that they use to make baked cookies and baked goods and donuts and those fats, some people call them seed oils, uh, the, the industrial strength oils that they use in crackers and cookies and processed foods. Um, they're just really wrong fats. And fatty beef and cheese, okay, I'm gonna, gonna say, and not enough fish and poultry, lean poultry. Um, a lot of people are eating enough poultry though. And processed meats, um, bacon, ham, hot dogs, lunch meat. And I know a lot of you liked me until now. <laughs> don't tell me I have to give up bacon. What are you talking about? Now, my mom had bacon once a week, every Sunday. And I have worked hard to find wonderful Sunday things instead of bacon. And there are so many wonderful Sunday things instead of bacon. Uh, you really don't have to have bacon that often, I'm just going to say. Um, and ham and hot dogs, processed meats. A lot, let me take a look at what's telomere lengthening. Well, fruits, like we just talked about, leafy greens. We're going to talk about leafy greens and how important they are. Not just a small bowl, but a big bowl every single day is absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt. You look at the, the, the blue zones, the people who live to a hundred years of age, um, people who it's like leafy greens and vegetables and they eat sweet potatoes. I mean, sweet potatoes and beans, legumes, which are pinto beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans, linked to longevity. Don't listen to what's on the, what, on, the, on the internet about beans have lectins and are bad for you. Well, if you eat them raw, but they're cooked, you always eat them cooked and they have no lectins. So I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they are absolutely linked to the longest lived people of the world and absolutely linked to telomere lengthening. Nuts, seeds, and flax. We're going to talk about flaxseed and delicious ways to use it and nuts and all foods high in antioxidants and making sure you get 30 grams of fiber a day, making sure you get 30 grams of fiber a day. So, so key and so important. So as you look at this, you might think, <laughs> how can I make vegetables and leafy greens be tasty and delicious? Well, have no fear. That's why I'm here. But before I do that, let's play a little true or false game, shall we? Uh, now I want you to hover over your chat and I want you to type in T or F, T or F, all right, over the chat. Here we go. Are you ready? True or false? Here we go. Study show. One tablespoon of ground flax seed a day reduces blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Well, that'll help us anti-age if we can improve those two things. And I got some trues. You, woo, you are smart. And so I try to eat one or two <laughs> tablespoons a day, but at least one tablespoon a day. It's absolutely true. And you can add it to so many different foods. I add it to my oatmeal every single time. I add it to every baked good that I make. I add it to applesauce, add it to so many things, yogurt, uh, definitely. And that's what I buy it. You can, I buy it, you can buy it whole seeds and grind them yourself or you can buy it already ground, just keep it airtight and in like your fridge or freezer and it will last and not, you know, age and, and oxidize or age. Um, some of you are looking at it going, yeah, but Zanya, 
okay, I'll eat it, but can I, can I put it in cookies? And as a matter of fact, you can. And I'm going to show you how to make chocolate, the most amazing, delicious chocolate. And by the way, that's an anti-aging food right there. Go through cans and cans and cans of these at our house. And it's an anti-aging food. It's 100% cacao. And you can make the most delicious muffins and cookies and breads. And just, we love it. I add a tablespoon to my oatmeal along with a tablespoon of flaxseed to my oatmeal. Chocolate oatmeal, why not? Um, it's a wonderful food. So these cookies right here, these chocolate bliss breakfast cookies, I would like to make for you and uh, show you how easy they are. You have the recipe and this is how they come together uh, so easily. You just mash a banana. Now this one recipe will make 15, uh, will serve 15. So you're starting out with just a banana right off the get go. And then we're adding an applesauce, uh, half a cup of that. And then next up is gonna be a cup of peanut butter. Yep, cup of peanut butter going in there. And that's the only fat. There's no two sticks of butter going in this. No, none of that. We are using good, healthy, whole food fats. And then we've got oats, a half a cup of those, and a quarter cup of flax seed goes in there. And then a quarter cup of, of cocoa powder. And then, now this is a quarter cup of sugar. You could use brown sugar, but this is coconut sugar. Yep, take a look, coconut sugar. That's what this is. It has a lower glycemic index. Um, so we're really nice alternative. And then a teaspoon of baking powder, and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And you mix that up. This was not hard. Was it hard? No, this was actually kind of fun. And then a quarter cup of dried cherries, cranberries, raisins, any add-ins that you'd like to add in. And you don't have to add in anything if you don't want. Um, but about a quarter cup each of those. And you could even add coconut to it if you wanted to. But there are some add-ins. Now, this is going to make exactly 15 cookies if they're this size, just like that. And um, yeah, there they are. Some pretty good looking, mm, 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 let me tell you, 15 total. Put them in there and we're going to bake these babies for, hmm, what about, what did I say? Oh, 11 minutes. Yep, 11 minutes and out they come. And these are so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. You just wouldn't believe how good they are. And in fact, I have some right here. And it is true. My AV man doubles as my baker today. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Yes, you deserve to have one. Yes, you do, honey. And yes, that's my husband and my AV man, Scott Foco. Big round of applause for Mr. Scott. Everything's going pretty good. Oh yeah. And he's, <laughs> yeah, he's all those things. Wind beneath my wings, all that stuff. Okay. So do you want me to try one for you? Do you want me to? Say yes. Mm. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay. Chocolate, happiness, amazement. They are crazy good. These are so, mm. you're like, these are healthy. You can make these for your children and your grandchildren. They can absolutely replace the cookie recipes that are loaded with all that stuff. They are plenty sweet enough. The applesauce, the bananas, and the little bit of either brown sugar or coconut sugar, absolutely delicious. So I could totally keep eating that cookie. Mm -mm. So good. Got the idea? So that's your second homework assignment. You didn't know you're going to have homework assignments, did you? Yep. You got to bake those. You got to make them and tell me what you think. That's right. All right, so back to this, um, there's those cookies. So let's do another true false, shall we? We can't live by cookies alone, can we? Although we could try to live by cookies alone. Remember I mentioned leafy greens? Yeah, let's talk about this true or false. What do you think? Eating a serving of kale daily was associated with elongating telomeres in as little as five days. True, <laughs> you're a smart group. You are a smart group. And it's true, you guys, it's, it's, it's true. Um, we absolutely are seeing that kale fights cancer. Kale does so many things for us and we just gotta learn how to like it. And so today I'm, I'm gonna show you how to massage kale. 
First of all, how many of you know how to massage kale? Do you? Do you know? Do you know what the benefit of massaging kale is? It makes it taste delicious and it, it, it softens it. It gets rid of the bitterness and the ten, it tenderizes it. So let me just show you this very simple recipe that uses a tablespoon of olive oil and it uses lemon juice as the acid, one of the acids. Lemon juice is the acid is gonna break it down, but you're also gonna add balsamic vinegar to this too and a little bit of salt. And don't omit the salt, leave the salt. It will not be too much salt. And you start massaging this. Yep, you massage it. And what's gonna happen, you do this for a full minute. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the oil and the acid and the salt into each and every leaf. And it's going to tenderize it. It's going to make it taste amazingly delicious. Let me tell you, <laughs> really delicious. And then now that it's all tenderized and it's bright green and softened, and then you add the toppings. And this is what restaurants do to make their kale salad so much better. You think, why is their kale so good? Because you just can't get dressing on every leaf. And this way it turns out really great. Now I gave this presentation. I was, I was hired to uh, present in a booth and get people to come into my booth. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can get people to come into the booth, no problem. And so I had a little microphone and I said, in five minutes, five minutes, I'm gonna be making the most amazing massage kale salad. We're gonna turn tough and tasteless kale into the most delicious salad you've ever had. And uh, a guy in the back goes, it can't be done. Like, who is this heckler? And I hope he leaves. So then it was one minute to go. I said, one minute to go. I'm going to make the most delicious massage kale salad. I'm going to turn tough and tasteless bitter kale into the most tender, delicious, satisfying salad. And he goes, it can't be done. So I did this. I presented, I showed how to do it. I made the salad. I divvied it up and I portioned it out. And I had a mom with her, I think, 13 year old son there and whoops, Scott, Oh, there, there's, oh, okay. I just, I have, there's a really relevant question that I want to ask. Yeah. You. One yeah. of the questions was, should the kale be organic? Oh, it's a great question. Um, yeah, the kale um, is on, it's any leafy greens. It is ideal if it's organic. I go to the grocery store and I buy whatever I can organic and, and then whatever I can't, it's okay. I just pray over it very much, but no, Kale is one of those that it would be great if it's organic. Great and question. then I have Thank one you. more question. Yeah. What about the use of Himalayan salt versus just iodized table salt? Great question. In America, we have an absolute iodine deficiency going on. And the only way we really get iodine is from iodized salt. Science. So gotcha. you can buy your Himalayan salt if you want, but you better make sure it's iodized. Meaning they sell sea salt that's iodized. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will tell you, no, I, 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 for a long time, I thought, oh, sea salt must be better. You know, everybody says so on the internet, that it must be yeah. better. Um, but you really do need iodine. Uh, you need iodine for your thyroid and it's, you, you know, you eat seafood, but we just really don't get enough iodine in our food anymore. Great. So, so I will bow out again. So keep thank going, you. I love I it. It's a lot more fun when we it's, it's this way. Okay. You're so you're not alone. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you so much. So Looking at, I gave this presentation and I had these people and I rocked around with a camera and I said, tell me what you think of the taste of this salad. All right. So here I'm going to roll tape. Here we go. All right. Here we go. The bite is going in. He is chewing. He is contemplating. I like it. I really like it. That's good news. I do, I, I do like it, and I mostly taste cranberry parmesan. Like I feel the texture, but I feel like I love the texture. Yeah, the texture. Really like good. I love the texture. I've never eaten kale before. You have never eaten kale before. No, it's good. My daughter asked her. <laughs> what is your daughter over here having the second plate? She doesn't eat anything green. <laughs> oh my gosh, you don't eat anything green and you're having your first kale salad. First kale salad. Oh, this is Mick, who said right. repetitively, it can't be done. Plate's almost empty. I'm going in for another one. No way. The key is the massage, all right? The key is the massage. The massage. Absolutely delicious. Delicious. You have no idea how much I want to hate this. <laughs>
but I love it. That is so good. It is so good. I love it. <laughs> Yay. So if you're wondering if you can make kale taste good, I think we have proof. And that is homework assignment number, what, three for you. Homework number seven is to make that kale salad. I want you to try it. If you haven't massaged kale before, now is your chance. So give it a try and yay to Mick. Um, and um, so I know that I'm supposed to be done about right now and I'm not. So Sarah, I hope it's okay if I keep going because I got a little bit more to share. Is that okay? I bet the 234 people that are on this call say, heck yes, keep going. <laughs> okay, good. Because I got another really great demonstration I want to share with you. And uh, so I apologize for running a little bit behind. So let's try to do that. All righty. So we did the massage kale salad and I had another true fault. Adding a single serving a day of cruciferous vegetable cuts the risk of cancer by more than half. True or false? What do you think? Yeah. Um, I see lots of trues. I see lots of trues. Yep. And the answer is true. And you're thinking, well, what's a cruciferous vegetable? And a cruciferous vegetable is anything from the cabbage family. So cabbage, and I chose to show you some red cabbage because it's even higher in the fabulous, wonderful rainbow color of antioxidants. But broccoli is also, and also is cauliflower. And even though it's white, it's deeply colored white, very colorful. And then your Brussels sprouts and even bok choy. And yes, kale. Yep. So <clears throat> all of these come from the cabbage family and we want to include them as much as possible. Some people feel like cooked is better than raw and that would be fine. I have a variety of both cooked and raw, uh, but to be able to have a serving every single day is truly very important. Now, how do we make it tasty? Well, I, I want you to know that more vegetarian meals are really important. Uh, when we have too much meat, it is absolutely lowers, slows our telomeres, telomeres. And so um, we definitely want to. This stir fry is going to feature two, three cabbage vegetables. And it uses a wonderful peanut sauce as the protein source. So here we go. This is the Thai vegetable noodle stir fry. Look, you've prepped your vegetables already. And we have... Uh, our sauce that we're going to make. So we're going to start with our sauce first, which boy, you'd think I'm a peanut butter fan and you can use almond butter. If you're allergic to peanut butter, you can use almond butter. There's um, cider vinegar, um, looking at soy sauce, 570 milligrams of sodium, even in that reduced sodium, amino acids, liquid aminos. Look at this is 310. That's lower. And then this coconut is these coconut aminos are down to 270 milligrams of sodium. So yes, we want to eat less sodium. Those that also was very important for health. And so I went with that instead. I went with a tablespoon of sesame oil that gives a wonderful, great flavor and just a tablespoon of honey. This is going to serve six people. And then you've got some red crushed red pepper and black pepper, and then garlic. Garlic is another anti-aging nutrient and ginger. And I'm using frozen. This was, I keep this in my freezer and it grates very easily. I don't even skin it. I don't even take the, I don't bother to take the rind off. doesn't matter. And I've got my nice fresh ginger and I'm going to put that frozen ginger right back in the bag and I'm going to freeze it again. So it's, it stays frozen. It never thaws out. And that way it never grows hair. <laughs> and I always have fresh ginger root all the time. So here we go. We mixed it up. It adds, so add a little bit of water to loosen it up a little bit. So it'll be perfect for a sauce for us. Um, so that's, and then we're going to boil up some spaghetti. I'm using a whole grain spaghetti. Now, everybody says spaghetti is fattening. Well, not the first cup. <laughs> we eat too much. So there's only three ounces of spaghetti I'm boiling. And the ratio is a fabulous ratio of, of carbs to vegetables. And this is how you make, this is how you eat pasta without it being fattening. I know we all think we have to give up all carbs. No, you don't. You don't have to give up all grains. No, just eat them in the right proportions with vegetables. Now, instead of two crowns of broccoli, I went with using up some of the cabbage that I had in my fridge. And then mushrooms are an amazing anti-aging food too. Mushrooms are amazing. So add them to every stir fry, add them to every, gosh, everything. Um, and so now then when your vegetables are good and done, this smaller amount of pasta... Remember, this is going to serve a lot of people. This says it serves six people. And there you go. This peanut butter, soy sauce, ginger, the flavor of this is amazing. I'm going to tell you it's totally amazing, really good. 
And then we are going to serve this. This makes a lot of servings. And I'm going to do a big size serving here because when it's a lot of vegetables, it looks like a lot, but not really. We're going to serve it for fruit for dessert. We're going to put a few peanuts on top and then some cilantro on top. You guys, the flavor of this is so out of this world and it's a meatless meal. And we need to eat meatless meals at least a couple times. Now the leftovers, a lot of you are like, I can't make this much. Yes, you can. It makes great planned overs for tomorrow. You don't have to cook for tomorrow. I got three servings out of that the first night and I will get a couple more servings the next night. So that ladies and gentlemen is uh, your next homework assignment is to make that Thai noodle stir fry. I'm gonna try to lay on this plane pretty quick. Let's go back to our sides. Will you do it? Will you make it? Will you make it? Uh, I hope you will. Um, yeah, I hope you will. All right. So back to my slides here. Let's see. Remember I showed you people don't know how to eat healthy. They think they know how to eat healthy, but they don't. Um, remember this? Well, taking a look, um, here's how you do it right. You back off on the cereal. You still have a nice whole grain cereal, but you add fruit to it. So you have as much fruit as cereal and it's a whole grain, no sugar added sandwich. We can have some bread. Isn't that wonderful? It's just, we eat too much bread. So half it and have a big salad with it. This is not too many carbohydrates. And then you look at the granola bar, which is loaded with sugar. Try Mr. Cookies that you made that you have in the freezer, freeze them up, have them, grab them and take them. And then the dinner, well, it's kind of boring, isn't it? Let's amp up the flavor. Yeah. Let's amp up the flavor and go meatless. And then let's have some those orange slices for dessert. By the numbers, this is somebody who really knows how to lengthen their telomeres. 10 servings of fruit and vegetables, 30 grams of fiber, less than three teaspoons of added sugars. That is what you call doing it. And a lot of people say, I saw the question, I'm a fan of keto. No, I'm not a fan of keto. People say, are you a fan of vegan, being 100% plant-based vegan? I'm a fan of both of them together. Realistic, long-term, and uh, getting the fiber that you need. People on keto can't get 30 grams of fiber a day. Try. It's, you can't do it without like doing some sort of supplement or something. Um, no, get the fiber that you need. It'll feed your pro, keep your, um, all the microbiota, your probiotics, all the probiotics, getting the happy germs in your gut happy. So very important. So it's a blend of those two. I don't think you have to be vegan. I don't think you have to be keto. I think it's the blend of those two together. And it's realistic for the whole family, the whole family. So I'm landing this plane. Are we ready to land this plane? And we'll go to our Q&A time and your anti-aging mission. Should you accept it? These are the things that my doctor, that I told him that I do, this is my diet right here. Put the sweet craving cure into action, a, a serving of fruit and a glass of water every four hours when awake and bake chocolate chip bliss cookies, the good for you. All right, so you're gonna get some carbohydrates, but it's gonna be the good for you carbohydrates, three grams of fiber in each cookie. Oh my goodness. And massage you some kale, baby, and be amazed at how good it is. And walk this way, uh, start walking once a week, not to be confused with confused with walking, which would be much more often, but having a stir fry once a week is a great habit uh, to get a lot of vegetables and less carbohydrates, right? Uh, it's not that we can't have any rice or any noodles. It's just that it needs to be less and the vegetables need to be more, more. and that's all we have to do. So there you go. There's my questions. I'm ready for questions. And, but I do want to make sure you all, if you enjoyed today, this is the tip of the iceberg. We got February 7th. I'll be back for lower cholesterol with these three foods. And I'll be back then also, whoops, on March 6th for Maximize Your Brain on March 6th. So now I'm ready for those questions, Sarah. So before we go any further, I want everybody that's still on the line to know that when we did our rehearsal on Monday, I happened to already have the cookbook. So of course I went home and made that stir fry and it was amazing. Super, super great. So thank you for those tips. And I know a lot of folks have been sending in questions to the chat and in the Q&A about getting the recipes. So Kelsey is here at the study here, making sure that we post those. And we will also post those with the recording when we're done. Nice. So do you want to pop over here, Kelsey? Sure. All Hi, right. everyone. Kelsey Hi, here. Kelsey. 
Um, I have been on the chat answering some questions and sending those links out. But Zonia, I've kind of compiled many of these questions for you. A lot of them are about specific foods. So I think maybe we could do some kind of rapid fire about some of these questions. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So first one, um, what are your thoughts about craisins? Are they too high in sugar or are they good? You know what? I just bought, hang on, let me show you what I bought. Everybody's been like discing craisins. I love craisins because when I add them to something, I know that they're adding a sweetening. And mm -hmm. remember, we get six teaspoons of added sugar a day and you're going to be getting some added sugar in craisins. So absolutely, I, I just know that they're sweetening it for me. So like I'll cut back on the sugar so that it's the sugar. So because yeah. remember, we get some. But they do have added sugar. So somebody said, Zanya, you really should buy these no sugar added um, cra cra cranberries. And I'm like, I bought them and I got them. And I was like, oh yeah, these are just going to be great. Oh, they're going to be great. Man, they're not sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but they're delightful in their own. They are mm -hmm. tart. They're, they're cranberries. And they give you so much of all the wonderful antioxidants that slow free radical damage in your body. And they are so amazing. So I'm adding these all over the place, but I know that they're not going to sweeten something like craisins will. So there's yeah. my answer about that. Look for these okay. if you want. And these are from Wisconsin and honestly, cranberries, and they are unsweetened dried cranberries, no sugars, juices. You can also find them sweetened with apple juice if you feel better about that. They'll still have the same amount of calories, uh, but it won't be technically an added sugar. So great question. Thank you. Next. Okay. What are your thoughts about turkey hot dogs and bacon? Great question. They still are processed with sodium nitrates mm. and they are going to be lower in fat content. And I used to, oh my gosh, Scott, do you remember when we were first married and we would get pizza with meat lovers pizza and, oh, these are bad. So we'll get Canadian bacon and we'll, you know, <laughs> use these things. No, they still have sodium nitrates. It's still a processed food and it is definitely linked to shortening our telomeres. Processed meats. I don't care how you try to dice this. Fresh meats that don't have salt added. Fresh meats that haven't been smoked. Mm -hmm. we can use some of those in moderation, mm. but I do think a plant-based diet, mostly plants and less meat and definitely not processed meats. And, you know, somebody asked at the top of the game, do I, am I a fan of keto diet? And I'm not a fan of keto diet. Everyone on a keto diet, it's a lot of bacon, bacon shortens your telomeres mm -hmm. any way you look at it. And everybody who's on a keto diet eats bacon <laughs> because you're limited in so many foods that it's like hard to live without it. And um, no, it, it doesn't really help your cholesterol level. I have so many people who lost weight, but their cholesterol is a mess and they just need to eat real food, eat real unprocessed food, lots of fruits and vegetables. Yes. Okay. Next. Yeah, well, just to kind of keep going with that, what about uncured deli meats and bacon? Yeah. So we think they might be better and, but we don't have any science to sure that they are better. So okay. I, I want you to be aware of that, that they might be better. And they are better than the other. So if you're like, oh, Zanya, I know you told me to have hummus instead of lunch meat, but I'm still going to have lunch meat, then get the uncured lunch meat. <laughs> but that I really sense. think of vegetable soup. And I think, uh, I think that when we look at all the other options, it's like, wow, I guess I don't have to have so much lunch meat every day. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Mike C about whether or not there's a way to measure telomeres. You know, I thought the same thing and I Googled it, looked and, you know, gosh, you know, and it looks like it's a pretty expensive for the high elite. It's not your doctor every day laboratory test just yet, but I have a feeling that's around the corner to be able to measure our telomeres. Yeah. To kind of get an idea. And will they, and another person said is, you know, is Alzheimer's and dementia interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And when I'm speaking about all the diet things that I'm giving you, it's absolutely interchangeable. I'm sorry I use the word Alzheimer's more than I do dementia, but um, they are both uh, dietarily very uh, related. Okay. Um, we have, protein's kind of a big topic these days. And we have Sue asking, how do we get all of the protein we need? Yeah, great question. Um, 
a lot of people feel like, well, plants don't give you any protein, but yes, they do. Uh, they absolutely do. And we tend to discredit plants. We tend to discredit that that stir fry, the amount of protein that's contributed from the vegetables and the amount of protein that's contributed from the grain and from the peanuts and the peanuts are a legume. And for people who want to be 100% plant-based, you just got to have three legumes every day and you will get all the protein you need three legumes every day. So an legume would be peanuts or pinto beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans, hummus, uh, three servings a day. And you'll get the protein you need without cheese, without milk, without fish, you know, without. I tend to be more of a Mediterranean diet person. I like to include some meat, but in what I call condiment proportions, much smaller. You only need 45 to 55 grams of protein a day. And a lot of people will say, no, no, you need 80 grams of protein a day. And when you read uh, Dr. Greger's book about how not to age, too much protein ages you. Mm -hmm. okay. Eating too much protein. So don't be on this, I got to eat protein, I got to eat protein. It sounds really sexy. It sounds like it's going to put muscle on us, but it's only going to put muscle on it if you're doing the work in the gym. Uh, I won't do anything for you if you're not. It's only if you're doing work in the gym and it's only if you have carbohydrates to burn in the gym and burning protein as fuel doesn't put protein on you. Having mm -hmm. extra protein to lay down is what does it, but it doesn't require 80 grams, 80 grams to a point too much protein becomes shortens our telomeres. It becomes aging. So there's a lot of value to knowing. And there's a great documentary uh, called uh, The Game Changers. And it has Arnold Schwarzenegger and um, him saying, I used to eat all this meat and protein and it really, it's really hurt my health. And I really, you really are not supposed to eat so much. And um, a vegan lifestyle, how vegan athletes have the competitive advantage over meat, animal food consuming athletes. So uh, a vegan diet, you wouldn't think would have enough protein for an athlete. And it absolutely does. So it has to be well-selected three legumes a day but absolutely can. So I hope that answers. Uh, I like to enjoy some protein, not every day, but I absolutely have fish, four ounces, four ounces raw, cooks down to three ounces cooked. So a quarter pound of fish or chicken or something like that, but I don't have uh, protein maybe three days a week, uh, meatless meals, otherwise legumes three to four times a week, legumes, sponge, cholesterol out of your body. We'll talk about that in our next session about how to do that, leverage that to lower our cholesterol. Okay. Another question we got quite a bit is whether or not honey or something like agave is as bad as sugar. Great question. So there's some advantages to honey. Agave has a dark side, a very, very dark side in how it's processed by the liver. And I'm not an agave fan for that reason. Um, yes, it has a lower glycemic index and you think it's going to be all better. And you think that, you know, even though the calories are the same, that it's going to be all better, but the way it is metabolized. So I do not recommend agave for that reason. And, uh, coconut sugar does not have the same problem, but has the lower glycemic index. I really, um, and so the other one was honey. I use honey, but not very much. Remember, it fits within that six teaspoons of added sugar a day. I used one tablespoon of honey in that stir fry that serves six people. So that's a half a teaspoon per person. And mm. I'm making a vegetable dish addictive <laughs> with a half a teaspoon of honey. And locally sourced honey that you don't heat, treat, but it gets kind of warm in your stir fry, but locally sourced honey delivers some amazing benefit for what scientifically we can see for fighting seasonal allergies. Um, it's actually medicinal food um, that uh, honey, local source honey. So I do think honey has a place in the diet for sure. Okay. Another very common question we got is what to do if we can't have peanut butter or if there's some kind of alternative that you would recommend for both the cookies and the stir fry. Yes, I briefly mentioned it really quick, and that's almond mm -hmm. butter. And there's yeah. also, if you can't have almonds, then there is uh, sun butter, which is from sunflower seeds. And they absolutely work in both those recipes, muchacho, perfectly. So okay. you can interchange that very much. So it's kind of pricey. Almond butter is kind of pricey compared to peanut butter, but you know, big deal. Next. Yeah. Okay. Two, I'm going to do two true or falses for you. So 
True or false, <laughs> is rotisserie chicken okay or is it considered a processed meat? Yeah, great question. Wow, big exposés on those rotisserie chickens. Um, you're looking at the ingredients and the injecting it and then the sodium content of it. And I know the convenience, I know the convenience. But there's also the problem that they put them in that plastic thing and that's mm -hmm. supposed to be heat okay. But do you know how much plastic is in our water when we use bottled plastic water, let alone in a heat rotisserie that the heat and the plastic that's getting, you know, we are eating like a credit card worth of plastic every however many months. It's ridiculous. And plastics are um, definitely a problem in our, our health. So we definitely, I would, I have the re a recipe for, and I can send you the link for it. It is that you take chicken breast and a few spices, put it in your crock pot, cook it for four hours, shred it, put it in your refrigerator. You have shredded chicken ready to go for lunch meat, for topping a salad, for adding to whatever you would use the rotisserie chicken for. Mm -hmm. And it is so much easier and is absolutely skips all the problems that we could be talking about. So I'm not really a fan of that, even though occasionally, I guess not. There's a big write-up in Consumer Reports, all the different rotisserie chickens from Costco to different places. And uh, really, none of them are great. Yeah, none of them okay. are great. But okay. is it a processed meat? It doesn't have sodium nitrate. It's not processed. It's just highly sodium. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. True or false, is salad in a bag considered a processed food? Great question. I really should use the word ultra processed. Mm. You know, like you take corn and you put it in a bag and freeze it. They process that, but it's just corn in a bag frozen. My refrigerators, I mean, I have, I use that, right? Yeah. Um, canned tomatoes, they processed it, but it's just tomatoes and maybe salt or not salt. And I'm like, I use that. So ultra processed foods where they've mm -hmm. actually stripped it and taken something bad has been, you know, some good has been taken out and bad has been added in. That's what we want to avoid with processing, which processed meats, they have added in something bad. So okay. processed meats, think about it. They've added in something bad. Now, sometimes you can buy sausage. All they did was add spices to it. Mm. That's okay. They can, you can take ground turkey and add spices to it and that's okay. Mm. But processing of um, sodium nitrates and uh, things that you can't read, right? Not real foods. Um, what was the other question in there? Um, bag. Oh, a bag of lettuce. <clears throat> the original question mm -hmm. was a bag of lettuce. I buy a thing of lettuce organic, um, tub already washed, ready to go. Scott, if you want to get that out and I'll show it to them. <laughs> Dad's lettuce may have some preservative is added to it, but it will say so. And, you know, and this is, you know, Scott and I, we're only two people and we will absolutely consume this in what, five days? Yep. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. eat that in five days. And the way that we help it stay long is we put this paper towel in there. Mm -hmm. It's a paper towel and that's absorbing moisture. And that is what helps it last. It's a great trick. Okay. Love okay. that we're in your kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, are there any fruits and people should avoid? Um, one question was specifically about pineapples. Um, and of course the banana question we already had, um, but is there any fruits that you would, you know, suggest people avoid? Great question. You know, every fruit that maybe get on the avoid list, like mangoes can have a quicker impact of blood sugar for some people who have type two diabetes. So mangoes might be problematic for some people. However, uh, Dr. Greger in his book talks about how they're incredibly high in something called spermidine. I know sounds, no, it has nothing to do with that other word, but spermidine, which is absolutely related to autophagy, which autophagy is cellular cleaning, which is mm -hmm. actually very important in the anti-aging, another one of his 11 pathways. And so autophagy is really great and mangoes offer that. So everything has kind of a, and it's really the, the amount you eat. I mean, you're not going to get a big blood sugar rise if you don't eat a whole lot of mango at one time. So it's like, okay, yeah, maybe mangoes, um, raisins, dried fruit. People go dried fruit are bad for you. Well, if they have added sugars, yes. Um, I know that cherries, I like to buy dried cherries. I like to buy them without added sugars, but they do taste better with some added sugar. That's up to you. Um, 
they taste more like cherries with added sugar. Um, and I just know that's part of my six teaspoons of sugar a day, you know, if I'm going to use that. Um, so fruit, if it's real food, it, it's really not bad for you. If it's highly ultra processed, and if it was made by a made in a plant, <laughs> if it was, it's, if it's a plant, it's good for you. If it's made in a plant, it probably isn't. So pretty much all fruits, you know, there's a lot of controversy about coconut. Unsweetened coconut is an amazing food. Um, it's amazing food. I add it to a lot of things. It has a high saturated fat content, but you can never base a food on one thing. And we've made that mistake in the past before. Coconut, mm -hmm. high in saturated fat, bad. Well, wait a minute. It's got all these other great things uh, going for it. So when you look at everything about it, um, really food delivers lots of things that way. Yeah, there we still have a bunch of questions, but I think one that I've seen a couple of times is your thoughts on dairy. Great question. I believe that when you test dairy for inflammation, it's not inflammatory unless you're a person who's allergic to it. So it scores low. Like when you look at the um, test for pro-inflammatory foods, dairy isn't inflammatory unless you're allergic to it. And some people are allergic to it. It's phlegm producing for them. And um, they might get a little phlegmy if they have a little too much dairy. I'm one of those such people. And I have to avoid uh, dairy for the most part. I can have a little bit of cheese here and there, but I cannot have full on dairy a lot. I can have some yogurt, a little bit here and there, but it's, it's, it's inflammatory for me. And so if you continue to eat something that is inflammatory for you, it's going to raise your CRP, your C-reactive protein. It's going to raise inflammation systemically for you. And that's not going to be good and anti-aging food for you. So in general, I do choose plant milks instead of dairy milk. I, I know that there's alternative cheeses out there, but I'm still using real cheese in small amounts. And it's hard to not, it's hard to eat cheese in small amounts, right, honey? Um, but we freeze it. It's in the freezer. And then we'll just use a little bit of sprinkle of cheese on something that we might need it to be on. Uh, so you can curtail your cheese eating uh, so that's a little bit more moderate, more like the Mediterraneans do. They don't avoid it. They don't not eat it, but they also don't overdo dairy. And um, so I hope that answers that question. Yeah. And then I think... The last one we might want to do is just reminding everyone what that max grams of sugar per day should be. And, you know, maybe some advice on if someone who's listening here today is really into it, they want to try the berry method, but they maybe have a spouse or a partner who's not so on board. What kind of advice would you give them? Thank you, Natalie, for the question. <laughs> yeah, spouses. Divorce. Divorce, Scott. Divorce, he says. <laughs> All righty. Ultimatums. Um, there are wonderful, um, documentaries that husband and wives typically like to watch movies together. And I would, you know, and I, in my marriage, you know, he gets to pick one night. I get to pick one night. He gets to pick one night. I get to pick one night. Well, you know, I'm going to pick a documentary. It's what I'm going to pick. That's what we're going to watch. We're going to learn something. And there are so many good documentaries. And I would watch the game changer with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's not going to argue about Arnold. Okay. And he's going to watch it and you're going to be entertained. And you go, oh my gosh. The other one is that sugar film. It is so informational, entertaining. I don't care if you're eight years old or 80 years old, you're going to love the sugar film. And so those two top of the right out the get go. And then forks over knives, um, forks over knives. Yeah. Would be another one. So there's, uh, I have a list on my website at zanya.com, all my favorite documentaries because they're so motivational. And when I meet people who are motivated and they eat right, no matter what, like uh, people die, they're at the hospital, they're go to the, go to the cafeteria, they make smart choices and people are go, aren't you stressed out? Like I'm eating all this other stuff because I'm stressed out. It's like, no, this is what I do. And like, how do they stay motivated and stay on track all the time? And I asked them, I'm like, tell me, you know, like, have you watched documentaries? They're like, yeah, yeah, I have watched documentaries. They don't realize that it's working under behind and helping their motivations. And I absolutely think those documentaries really help men. I personally have also done several videos on YouTube too, that I've had people tell me, hey, my spouse is now on board because he watched that. <laughs> but there's some ideas. That's, uh, that's what I got for spouses. And it is important gotcha. to both be on board. 
whole, whole family. I don't believe in a keto diet because it's so extreme. Not everybody in the family is going to eat that way. Vegan diet is so extreme for everybody in the family. Not everybody's probably going to eat that way. And bringing it together, the Mediterranean diet style is doable, last longing, definitely great for the cholesterol, definitely a great, we can definitely do it. Yep. So that's what I think. Right. Sounds good. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up today. Um, I, Thank I, you. I love your AV guy, just always coming, coming <laughs> to hit another home run. <laughs> Thanks, oh, honey. He did pretty good. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for picking me for bringing you to your keynote series. Yay, you, everybody. Um, yay, you for being interested in your health. Here's to anti-aging. Sorry if I didn't get to your question, and uh, but we'll allow more time for questions next month. Next time. So we'll there's always you. We always have to have the first run through to understand how many questions there's going to be. But yeah. you know, I really want to thank everybody who's just sent in all kinds of fabulous comments about how much you love today's presentation. Um, our keynote speaker series is very, very important for us, and we are super excited. So if you'd like to tune in next time, go ahead and register on MTL for February the 7th. And then again, remember, if you can't make it, we'll have a recording so you won't miss out. And then also March the 6th will be our third in a series. And depending on how our members like this, we may eventually do some kind of a culinary demonstration or something like that that Zonia and I have talked about. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But until next time, everybody, thanks for tuning in and we will see you soon. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.